Hello, Akako, and Ekomovai. Our old friend is back, the old five tundra. Today we're going to do a leak down test to find out why cylinders number four and six are low in compression. We're going to find out where that compression is going, so let's jump on into the video. Okay, step one on this was to get the engine to full operating temperature, so I just shut it off, and we're going to pull the spark plugs out right now, so let's get to that. Pull out the spark plug. These things are going to be hot, so it's good to have gloves. Because I'm doing this by myself, I rigged up a starter push button um, just by pulling out the starter relay, and I'll show that to you later. But right now, you see it works, so let's go ahead and leave that on the side for a moment. So this is the hose that connects to my gauge. This is a 14 millimeter thread pitch. And just thread this into the spark plug hole and use this to try to get top dead center on cylinders number four and six. All right, now that we have our hose hooked up and our electrical connector hooked up here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crank the engine over slowly, just in a series of small taps until I get pressure building up right here. Then I know that I'll be coming up on top dead center on the compression stroke. Okay, coming up with compression on cylinder number six. Now you can't do this for all engines. This happens to be uh, an engine where the spark plug is aligned straight with the piston. And um, you can do this procedure. But what I'm doing is I'm sticking a screwdriver in where it's hitting the top of the piston. And as I rotate, I'm gonna watch from underneath as this screwdriver gets pushed out. When the screwdriver stops rising, I'll stop. I, be, I should be right at about top dead center at that point. So stick it in the spark plug hole, rest it on something so it's going to come out fairly straight. And from underneath, I'm going to watch as I rotate the engine and the screwdriver should come out slowly. As it's coming out, it's going to stop and then I'll stop right there and I should be just at about top dead center at that point. Okay, that screwdriver is moving. Okay, from underneath. It looked like this screwdriver stopped moving out. And you may not have been able to see that because it's really slow, really small movements of the screwdriver. But anyway, once again, as I rotate the engine, the piston comes up and pushes the screwdriver out. When it stops moving, when the screwdriver stops moving out, I stop, so I'm pretty close. Hopefully I'm close enough um, to top dead center where the engine does not rotate or does not spin when I put some air pressure in that cylinder. Okay, so as I put air into the cylinder, my gauge will give me a percentage leak of how much it's leaking. And as I listen to the air, I do not expect to hear air coming out of the intake manifold, out of the throttle body there. I don't expect to hear any air over there. If I do, we have a problem with that valve, whether it's the adjustment or the valve itself, or the valve is stuck open or bent or whatever. I also don't expect to hear any air coming out of the exhaust pipe. So let's hook up our gauge set again. Okay, now we're going to slowly add some air pressure here, making sure the engine does not rotate. There's 20, there's 30, let's go up really slow. So 75 and 37. Check companion cylinders by screwing this in, make sure we don't have any uh, air leaking from cylinder number six to cylinder number four. Okay, no air leakage from six to four, and let's check from six to eight. Okay, I'm not feeling any build up of pressure of air coming out here. So, as far as I can tell right now, there's no air leakage between cylinders four, uh, four and six, six and four, six and eight. No air leakage. But I can still hear air leaking somewhere. Let's open up the throttle body here. Oh, I can hear it already. It's really quite loud. All right, I have a significant amount of air leaking from cylinder number six back up through the intake manifold and out the throttle body here which means that that intake valve on that side is either damaged misadjusted and seeing that this cylinder head was just redone i'm guessing that it's probably misadjusted valves on both of those cylinders and that's what i'm going to tell my buddy who owns this truck
I do have some air escaping the oil tube, but I expect to hear some out there. So when you're doing this job, you also want to take the radiator cap off and uh, make sure that there's no bubbles coming up at the cooling system, which would be really common if you had a blown head gasket or a cracked head maybe. Even a cracked block, you can get bubbles coming up in the cooling system. So things you want to check, air escaping from the cooling system, air escaping from the engine block itself past the rings, air escaping through the intake manifold, which would be an intake valve, and air escaping out the exhaust, which would be an exhaust valve. All right, what I'm going to do now is just I'm just going to disconnect everything, put everything back together, give my friend a call, and uh, let him know what I found.